These pretty tissue box covers would make perfect gifts and of course you can coordinate with any room in your home, your bedroom, your bathroom or even your car. Some of them have buttons, some of them have ribbons, but this is the one that I'm going to show you. Alfie's going to blow his nose. This is the one that has the ribbon ties on the top, so this is where we start. The first thing to do is to measure the size of your tissue box um, and I've marked the central line as well. So I've got a length across the top of nine inches. My halfway mark is four and a half, and I've drawn a line across the box, and I've actually written on the box what the measurements are as well, so you're not going to see this. This is underneath your tissue box cover after all. Across this way is four and a half inches. Yours, yours may be different, that's what mine is. Um, central mark again, and then the depth of mine is two and a half inches, and again I've drawn that central mark all the way around all of the sections. Now my fabric is going to be one piece of fabric and it's going to wrap around like this and meet almost in the centre here. So I need one measurement of all the way around the box but then I need to add an extra half an inch because I want half an inch seam allowance on either end of the fabric. So that means I need to add up all four sides which is four and a half plus four and a half plus two and a half plus two and a half which is Nine, nine, nine inches, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen inches, and then add an extra half inch for the seam allowance. So my first strip of fabric, or the first side of my fabric, is going to measure fourteen and a half inches. The second side of my fabric is going to go around one half of the whole section. So I need to measure from my halfway mark up, across, and down. So two and a half becomes one and a quarter, plus nine plus one and a quarter, which equals nine, ten, eleven and a half inches. But I want my seam allowance again, so I'm going to make that twelve inches, so I've got quarter of an inch seam allowance either side. So basically, wh whichever way you're measuring your fabric, always add an extra quarter of an inch. Now the next thing I need to do is to make my piping. So I've cut my fabric, and I'll just put that to one side. I bought some, some bias binding because the colour matched really well and I pressed it open. Normally bias binding comes pre-folded, but I pressed mine open and I'll need two lots of the smallest side, which was 14 and a half inches. But I've measured it a little bit longer, just in case. So first thing to do is to fold the fabric around the piping. My piping's about a quarter of an inch and then I'm just going to put a few pins in to keep that in place. You don't have to pin if you're confident. I'll just put a few in there to get it started, but it's important to match the edges of the, the bias up together. Like so. Then I've got to put the, the zipper foot on my sewing machine, and I've taken the needle over to the left-hand side, and I'm just going to run a straight stitch all the way down the side. It doesn't have to be perfect, this one, because you're not going to see it. So you could get away with quite a long stitch as well, if you wanted to. So, there we go. As long as those two edges are kept together, because this will be um, lined up against the edge of your fabric in just a second. So I'm going to finish all the way down my length of bias binding and then cut it in half and that goes one either end. So that's my bias binding finish, uh, finished. What I need to do then is to apply it to the shorter edge of my fabric from a tissue cover box. Um, face up with the pattern of the fabric and facing inwards with the piping and I'm just going to pin that with the edges together across the top of my fabric. I know I've cut a little bit excess, so I'm just going to leave that um, over the edge, pin that in place. Then my second row of stitching is going to be inside the first row, so you don't see the first set of stitching, because it wasn't really very neat. But it didn't need to be. Oops, there we go. And I'll just cut that off loosely there for now. And again with the zipper foot on, with the needle as far over to the left hand side as it'll go. This time I'm going to sew as close as I can to the piping 
but without sewing through the piping itself. Now you can feel where it is and I'm going to kind of bump up to the edge of the piping with the edge of my zipper foot and if you do this at an angle it really helps to keep the, um, the zipper foot and the needle really in quite tight. If it does look a little bit loose when you take it out then you can always go back over it again. Right up to the edge. And like so, I'm just going to back tack to hold that in place either end and snip it off. Now what I like to do, because that's my neat edge now, to save me pressing and to keep this bit in place is to put a row of top stitches just on the top here. Um, so I'll need to put my zipper foot onto the other side of my machine and this time take the needle over to the right hand side. If you've got a function to do that on your machine then now's the time to do it. And just a row of straight stitches in this case, using the piping as a guide for that foot so it's kept in a straight line. But you are going to see these stitches so it's important that your line is kept straight. It's, uh, you can also use your decorative stitches. So maybe you have a, a crossword, a crossword, um, a patchwork or cross stitch or those kind of stitches. You can use those across the top, in a, even in a decorative um, thread, because you will see those at the top. But I'll give you mine plain. So I've put the piping across the top. That's it on the inside. You won't see that. Doesn't matter if it's messy. Nice and neat on the outside. And then I'll do exactly the same on the other short end of my fabric. I'm just going to trim off my ends and excess fabric and make that nice and neat then I just want to try and fit it with the box and make sure that it fits properly so my tissue box will sit in the centre this is how it's going to work with both of the piped edges coming over the top and meeting in the middle now it's not too tight it's not so, so tight that I can't actually get it on um, but what I would like to happen when it's finished is that this closes over a little bit more so I need it to open so I can get the box in, but I want it to close, so I need some kind of fastening. So I've just cut some ribbon, and I'm going to sew them on at this point, because I'm going to sew them on underneath, like this, so you don't see them from the top. So if I just mark in place, or pin them in place while I'm here, so that they're even. You could measure this if you want to do it exact, but um, for time's sake I'll just pop a pin in for now round about there and around about there and make sure they meet up on the other side so your edges should be lined up nicely and that's where I'm going to sew my ribbon on. So again just from, from the inside I've got four strips of ribbon which measure about 10 inches in length. Of course you can always cut them down if that's too long. I'm going to put my regular foot back on again, my zigzag foot, onto my sewing machine. I don't need the zipper foot anymore. And just go backwards and forwards over that a few times with my straight stitch. I'll try and keep that along the lines of the stitching I've already got. But if you use um, the same colour thread, you're not going to notice that. So just backwards and forwards a few times there, and that's one, next one's here, yeah when you've got more time at home you can me measure this precisely, just trying to keep it quick because this is a boring bit, backwards. And of course when you finish you'll trim off all of these excess threads and keep it nice and neat. If you do have any stitches on, on the outside that don't look too good, um, you can always embellish afterwards. Um, so a button on top of your stitches. You could glue a piece of applique or even glue a fancy button if that's easier. As long as you use a, a really strong fabric glue that's not going to come undone. I don't think this is going to be something you'll need to put in the washing machine, so I wouldn't worry too much about it being um, washing machine friendly glue. Final piece on here. Get me a 
should be kind of right. Right, the next thing to do is to actually make up the shape of the box. And again, you trim away all of those excess threads and keep it nice and neat. But for time's sake, I shan't. What I'm going to do is keep the right side up and I'm going to fold my two bias pieces together. Finger crease the halfway mark. This is where it's better using 100% um, cotton woven fabric because it will crease, which is what you want with them, um, with sewing projects. And then take each side and bring that in to your crease mark. Make sure you keep your ribbons out of the way, into the crease mark like so. And I'm going to pin that in place. I'm going to sew down the edges to make the box shape. So I'll just pin that to hold it for now. And I can keep these pins well clear of what I'm sewing. So just a straight stitch again. Remember I had a quarter of an inch seam allowance. So I'm going to sew a quarter of an inch in from the edge of my fabric. Just moving my needle over. Back tuck at the end, and then sew. Now when I get to the section where the piping is, I'm just going to go backwards and forwards to reinforce it, because this is the weakest point. When I stretch the, the cover to go over the tissue box, that's going to be the point that if the stitches were going to rip, it would happen. So I'm going to go over both sides exactly the same. Back to so strength in that area. Do it a few more times if you wanted to. And backwards and up. And take your pins out. The next thing to do, without turning it inside out is to fit the box inside because this is where we're going to work out the three-dimensional aspect of the box. You see what I mean about strengthening those side sections because if the stitches are going to crack they do it now when you put the box in. So force that over like so. Well it fits I'm just going to tie those for now, loosely. But what I'm concentrating on are the corner sections. And I'm I'm going to mark where those corners are. So keeping it nice and flat, square as I can. I need to put a mark on the, on the corner of each one of these points, quite visible. So there's one, try and keep it nice and square. Two. Three. Four. Then I'm going to turn it over and do the same on the other four sides, so pinch it You'll feel where the corner of the box is, and I'm just going to put a big fat mark on top of there. If you've got very um, pale fabric, it might be an idea to use uh, Taylor's chalk or disappearing ink. But just so that you can see what I'm doing, I'm just doing this in marker pen. There. And then take your cover off. Then it's a case of drawing the dots. So, open out the corner, take the first dot on the top, take the dot on the bottom and flatten that corner out. Then I'm going to draw a line between those two dots 
and that's where I'm going to sew. So I'll need my ruler, top dot, bottom dot, line across. So that's going to be my stitch mark and I'll need to do that on all four sides. I'll just do one for now and then I'll finish them off in a second. So line up where the dot is. I'm going to back tack. I don't want that to come undone. Quite a small stitch. And so straight down that line. Back tack at the other end. And take it off. So it looks like this. Then what I would do when I finished all four sides is just cut away the very point. I'm not going to cut too close to those stitches just in case I've got them in the wrong place because that means I've got room to unpick them and do this again if I need to. So then I'm going to go around all of the other four corners and do exactly the same. Okay so I've sewn over all of my corners from dot to dot and I've cut off the excess fabric on the points just trimming away the loose threads I've got now because uh, and to be a bit messy like that, neaten it up a bit. Then I'll turn my tissue box the right way around and push out the corners. <laughs> no, it's nice, Alfie. A few excess threads there. And then let's see if it fits. So I'll keep my ribbons out. Put my box in. Bring it over. And Kelsey's found a biscuit. All excess threads. And we're done. So I'll just tie the bows on the top. There. And then finally, just to make sure it works, they pressed over. There's my tissues.